here now, Tammy Bruce, president of the Independent Women's Voice and a Fox News contributor, Father Jonathan Morris, Fox News religion analyst, and Enrique Acevedo, Univision news anchor. Enrique, let me start with you. Um, you know, when you look at these pictures and you look at the history of this law, it has been in place for a very long time. Well, first of all, I think we can all agree that family separation is cruel, it's inhumane, and in this case, it's completely unjustifiable. There is no law in our immigration books that says that children can be separated or should be separated from their parents. That's just not the case. Right now, what we have is a policy implemented by the Trump administration, zero tolerance, that is, uh, has resulted in over 1,900 kids being separated what, from Enrique, their families let me ask you this, though, What do you make of, of Jeff Sessions' explanation when, when he says, you know, when, when a parent commits a crime, the child cannot go to jail with them? in order to keep the family together. And they are saying crossing the border illegally is breaking the law. So when that happens, unfortunately, temporarily, while the parents go through the process here, because they're not going to be caught and released anymore, that they have to be separated. So they're trying to find safe places to hold these children. We saw images of, of some of those, those areas. Obviously, it's a terrible situation for families to be separated. But it, you know, when you look at it that way, doesn't, does that make any sense to you at all? Not at all. I think there's such a thing as discretion. We're not putting shoplifters behind bars in every case and separating them from their families. And they broke the law. We're not putting people who are in possession of marijuana behind bars in every case and separating them from their children. And they're also breaking the law. So there's such a thing as discretion. And before zero tolerance was implemented, that was the case with immigrant families. We don't need to separate immigrant families. We don't need to separate almost 2,000 kids from their parents just to make a point and use that as a deterrent, as Chief of Staff Kelly and Attorney General Sessions had said. Tammy, the other thing that Jeff Sessions said about this is that since they sort of became lax in this program, um, it was sort of understood by some people who wanted to get into the country that if you come as a family, they will let you through. So this is a better way to come, bring your kids, and now obviously that's changed. Right. That's one of the problems with the policy for years is that we effectively subsidize this kind of an approach, that people found out that if you have a child, you're, you're going to be caught and released if you, versus not having a child. The New York Times reported in April that, in fact, people are admitting this, that families brought children knowing that there was a better chance that they would get through and be released, and that others, and this is the serious dynamic with both unaccom well, unaccompanied minors and minors in general, are people posing as parents. So uh, here we've got the outrages overcoming the facts. And I'll give you an example there's three reasons why parents or adults are separated from children. One, they're posing as the parent and they're not the parent. They're, they're a, a threat to the child uh, or they are put into criminal proceedings. This is, it's not a wholesale Which is every division. Case now under zero it's, uh, it's, and, and so this is uh, also, again, something that was happening throughout the, the Obama uh, uh, regime as well. But it comes down to catch and release. But we've facilitated the, the uh, choice of, of parents. Uh, and others of bringing children across the border in order to, in a, in a way, game the system at the border. This is what the, pr the president wants to have stopped. He stated he wants it stopped. All of us are outraged that we're even in this dynamic. And it comes down to an orderly immigration dynamic and security at the border where we can treat everyone uh, with dignity and people are not encouraged to move into the country in this fashion. All right, let me bring in Father Jonathan. Um, Father Jonathan, you have Catholic bishops and you have Franklin Graham arguing that these families need to be held together. In fact, the Catholic bishops going as far so far as to say that if anyone is helping to implement this program and is Catholic, they could potentially become excommunicated for being part of it. Okay, that was one bishop who actually suggested that. Um, I don't think it represents all of them. Um, but the fact is, is that we have 20 percent more children in this situation separated from their children this year compared to last year. So that's a big deal. So we have to solve this. And I don't think we're that far away from solving it. Both President Trump, as well as the Republicans and the Democrats all say this is an outrageous situation. Whose fault is it? Of course, it's the there's people who are faking bringing children over and saying that they're that they're their children. It's not. Of course, there's people who are breaking the law, coming over illegally. All of that is bad. But the government has to be bigger than that to say, what are we going to do about it? Because there are children who are there who are alone and it is traumatic for them. It's traumatizing for them. And I say this not from a the theoretical perspective. I live in the South Bronx. 
I see what's happening to these families with these children. And I see children who are here without parents. Okay, the parents are definitely not perfect and they shouldn't be crossing illegally, but the government has to figure out what we're going to do for the sake of these children. All right, so what do, what, what do they do? Do they change the law? Do they incarcerate families together? Um, you know, Enrique, what, what's the solution? Because you've got the, peop the folks who are breaking the law and there is a law, there is a border, you're not allowed to cross the border illegally. And then you have, I think, everyone here in this conversation and outside of it who really understands that this is not an ideal situation. The president made that clear himself. I appreciate the question, Martha, because we should be focusing on solutions. And I think the solution is not separating families. There are very few examples of governments using family separation throughout history, and we don't want to be part of that. And the solution is just not building walls and reducing the legal path for immigrants to come into this country and, again, separating children from their parents. I think the solution has to do with fighting the root causes of immigration, with having a wider legal path so people can come here and do the jobs that we need them to do. There are a lot of solutions that we could, uh, you know, agree on in Congress, but it seems that the extremes have taken over the debate, and now there's there's no space for for a, so a, a, a comprehensive I, immigration. So at this point, I think there's, you, wait, you got you got yeah. a couple of bills that are going to be considered eventually. It looks like um, that would allow 25 uh, billion dollars to build the wall, as well as a solution to this problem to keep families together. So, is that a workable solution, Tammy well, and then Father John? Uh, let me just say that this is you. We definitely want, if, especially if it's a misdemeanor dynamic, where you can keep uh, families together within a separate kind of facility so you don't have to separate them. And then that process is very quick, as a matter of fact. And then you can go, they can go home as a unit. But that becomes the political argument of do they go back home to their home country uh, and others want them released here. So that can be very, a very quick framework of sending, uh, keeping families together at once a criminal proceeding is over, usually within the same day, and then sent home. Uh, the, the other framework of uh, I mean, this, this is the solution, I think, in general, when it comes to uh, how we handle keeping mm. families together while also respecting our laws here at home. I, you know, Martha, I think uh, we, we have to, can't forget that there is tremendous amount of hypocrisy over many different administrations. The fact that we have we are right now allowing people to come in, giving them work no doubt, giving them work and then saying, hey, listen, but you can't be full members of our society because we do not want to do an E-Verify system. In our country, we do not want to actually find out who's illegal. And we can't forget that because it's and it, we're taking advantage. And there are children who are growing up right now who have been here in the country for their whole lives, who are with families, who simply the parents are working but they cannot become full members of our society, and it's not helpful. Let's hope I that mean, politics Father. don't get in the way of a solution, because both sides would really rather not have the other side involved to come up with a solution, it seems, it's uh, with this very hot debate. So let's see where it goes. Thank you very much, all of you. Great to have you here tonight.